Good morning. It's Friday morning. Thank you for joining us today for our uh, time of prayer and reflection today. Uh, so it's a joy to be joining with you today on this Friday morning for our uh, morning prayer. We'll, we won't have prayer Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday we would invite you to worship with us at St. Matthew's or worship with a church of your choosing uh, to find a place to pray and to be in community together. And then we'll be back with you Monday morning. Um, but today, on this Friday, we'll be uh, using our uh, daily devotional, uh, the, Book of Common, uh, the Book of Common Prayer, which is found on page 137 in your Book of Common Prayer if you own one. Our psalm today that we'll start with will be Psalm number 91. Where the psalmist writes these words. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. Your faithfulness, His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, or the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, or the destruction that wastes at the noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge shall come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all ways. On their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. You will tread the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample, trample underfoot. Those who love me I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call on me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I shall satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our reading this morning will come from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 21. We're reading verses 5 through 19 of Luke 21, 5 through 19. When they were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, he said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? What will be the sign that this is about to take place? He said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he. The time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and, and, and insurrections, do not be terrified. For these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. And then we'll say to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before, before this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand by or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, their relatives and, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name. The battle not ahead of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will, you will gain your souls. Jesus here is telling us that, and this is one of the things we're going to talk about in our coming days in our sermon series uh, we're looking at right now called Troublesome Bible Passages. One of the things that we see um, in Scripture and one of the things we see in Jesus' life is that Jesus comes and demands that we make a choice. Demands that we choose to follow him or reject him. Demands that we, we, that we have a choice to make. He says in a passage we're going to read in the coming days in, in worship that he's come to bring not peace but a sword. He comes to us and demands that we choose one way or the other. Choose to follow, choose to reject. But then choosing to follow is not a choice that has no consequences. But in fact, we see here choosing to follow will in fact have consequences. So we see in this passage we read today that uh, that those who follow Jesus will face difficult times. Those who face Jesus will face persecution. Those who face Jesus will face trials. In fact, we in the West, um, America, Europe, places like that, we, we may sometimes have discomfort because of our Christianity. When you go to other places across the globe, the global south, uh, Africa, parts of Latin America, parts of, of Asia, you see there that, that being a Christian may cost you your life. And so while we may, we may at times in, in our nation face some discomfort because of our faith, we have not yet seen it rise to the level of persecution 
that we see happen in other areas across the world. Uh, China, where Christians are regularly jailed. Um, places like Iran, where the church is growing like wildfire. Many parts of Africa, where the church is growing. They face active persecution, both from their neighbors as well as from their very government. So those of us that now have affluence and safety, we should keep our brothers and sisters in Christ who face persecution. We should keep them in our prayers daily for the sufferings that they endure. But what, what I want you to see when you read this passage here is that Jesus tells us all these things. He tells us this almost in an encouraging way because he says here, he says, um, he, he, he says, um, um, this is in verse 13, says, this will give you an opportunity to testify. Verse um Verse 18 says, but not a hair on your head will perish. Jesus tells us that even when we face persecution or we face troubles, we face worries and fears, that we should not be afraid, that we should not despair, that we should not give up hope. Because the one thing we're told in these passages here is that the Lord is at work, the Lord is in charge, and we do not have to fear. So often passages like this make us afraid. The scripture is clear over and over again, do not fear, for God is with us. He, he is guiding us. He is protecting us. He is with us no matter what trial we find ourselves in. So today, be faithful. Uh, even if folks may get a little upset with you, be faithful. Serve the Lord with gladness and know that he will protect us and he will intercede for us. And we have nothing to fear when the Lord is at our right-hand side. So rejoice in that today. We now come to recite our creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now pray. Loving and gracious God, we come to you on this early Friday morning, God, seeking your grace and mercy for the day that is to come. We pray as we just read, God, we pray for protection for brothers and sisters that face persecution, or that face troubles, or that face trials, Father. We pray for those now today on this Friday who are ill, those who are suffering, those who are battling cancer, COVID, so many diseases, Father, those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, those who face uncertain days, God, or troubles, be with them. We pray, God, for those traveling this weekend, God. We pray for protection for all those in need. God, we do pray, especially for those now that are battling addiction. God, those that are struggling with mental illness. God, those who feel alone, afraid, or forsaken. We know that you're with them. We know that you will guide them. We know that you will protect them. So be with these now, God. We pray for our country and for our leaders. We pray as well for our military, Father. Pray, God, for all these. We pray for those for whom no one else prays. Loving God, we do ask you to forgive us of our sins. And we ask this prayer this morning, God, not in our name. We ask it in the name of the one who taught us to pray as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today I'd like to read to you, again, in closing, from the rule of St. Benedict, uh, a guy that has been a friend to me for years. We're going to be reading for our, re our reading today from, um, from, from uh, June, uh, from June, uh, our reading from, from June 18th. Um, it says, On the Feast of Saints, and indeed all solemn festivals, the Sunday order of celebration is followed. Through all the psalms, refrains, and readings proper to the day itself. The procedure, however, remains the same as indicated above. And then Joan Chittister writes, The meaning of this chapter here is not so much its content as its existence. The fact that it is here at all in a document written when the identification of the saints was larger and a matter of public acclamation, and their number was far fewer than now, says something about Benedict's ideas both of church and the meaning of prayer. Benedict's theology of prayer is as much as tuned to the communion of saints, to our connectedness to those who have gone before us in the faith, to those who stand as a sign to us that Christian life is possible, as it is to the feast that mark the Paschal mystery of Christ. We all need heroes. We all need someone in our life who brings courage. We all need to get to know how the Christian life looks at its best, at its most difficult, at its most joyous. 
The lesson is that we must keep human dimensions of the faith very much in mind and find models from the past proof that the daily chaos can be ordered and the ordinary transfigured for us too as well. We all need heroes. I love that. We all need heroes. We all need people that we can look to. So today, as you go about your day, think about who your heroes are. Your heroes within scripture, your heroes within your Christian reading, and your heroes within your life. And then ask yourself today, how can you be a hero to someone else? And how can your life inspire someone else? So as we close today, hear our closing prayer. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us into safety in this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome with by the adversary. And all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for praying with us today. Have a great rest of your day. And I we'll, uh, hope to see you in church Sunday. And we'll see you Monday morning for prayer. Have a great day.